portion of health and strength we thank you for clothing us and putting us in our right mind but most of all father we thank you for holding us and keeping us we thank you for your grace and for your mercy we thank you father for loving us when we were an unlovable people we thank you father for such a great salvation that you've bestowed upon all men that would confess and believe and we thank you that that salvation is free to all. And Father, I pray now that you would touch me and speak your word. I pray, Father God, that this word will go beyond these walls and touch men, women, boys, and girls and let them know that you are the Savior of the world and that whosoever will is able to come. Come unto the love and to the mercy and to the kindness of our Father. And Father, I pray that you bring strong conviction on all of your children, that we might reach them, that they can leave this place. And I'm talking about this earth and know that we're headed towards heaven. 
know that your salvation is secure and complete. But Father, we know that because you keep us here, you, don't, you, you also equipped us. You equip us with some joy, some love, some peace, some understanding which surpasses all understanding. And Father, all we must do is call on your name because you give it to us freely and liberally to all mankind. And Father, we're just acknowledging that you are the King of kings and you are Lord of lords. And Father, there's nothing going on that you can't handle and that you don't know about. And Father, we just sit at your feet that you might bless us. So Father, just take control of your children. Let us humble ourselves because you said if we become as little children, that's where we get into the kingdom. And Father, here's your child now. I'm standing before you asking for your mercy and asking for your grace. And I ask for your power, Father, that I can preach your word with boldness and conviction. Oh, how I love that name. Thank you for Jesus who hung, bled, and died that we all might have right to the tree of life. Father, I pray salvation to all mankind. Makes no difference of color, race, creed, or ethnicity. Father, you're the God of all, and I thank you, and I praise you. And it's in your blessed name that I pray this and all other prayers. Amen and amen. 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 It's good to see you on today. I feel like I've preached already. But I just want you to know that that's just a conversation. I love him. I've said it and there's no other way for me. Ain't nobody left but Jesus. Everything else will come to naught. Because everything else is a lie. Jesus is the only truth. Ain't nothing you can tell me. You cannot make me doubt him. Because I know too much about him. I don't understand all of his ways. But I believe all of his ways. I may not understand it from Genesis to Revelation. But whatever book, chapter, or verse I'm in. I know it to be true. Because he is the only true, wise, and living God. I'm sold out. Maybe you know like I know. I've tried some of it all. None of it has worked. There's only one gospel. There's only one truth. And his name is Jesus. He hung, bled, and died. Most of all, he rose again. Met many great men, many great women that have died. And that's the end of the story. But only Jesus, my brother, my friend, my father, my way maker, my midnight rider. He's the only one who has this testimony that he rose again. You don't have to take my word for it. Just have a little faith because he's coming back again. And if you think I'm happy now, you ought to see when he gets back. The song says, I've surrendered all. All to him I owe. I know I'm supposed to be preaching, but this is testimony time. I found the Savior. Found one who loved me when I was mean. As they say, too mean to live and wasn't fit to die. And he said, I love you, son. Not only do I love you, but I'll place love in you. I'm just rejoicing because now I'm able to love those that despitefully use me. I'm able now to love those that frown at me. I love you and it ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. Get your Bibles. Get your Bible. Turn to the book of Galatians. Turn to the book of Galatians. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 6 through 9. <clears throat>
Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9 reads, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto, unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have pre received, let him be accursed couple of words in here we need to pay close attention to. One is in six and the other one is in eight. Uh -huh. But I'm going to preach to you today about the gospel versus another gospel uh -huh. versus any other gospel. The gospel versus another gospel versus any other gospel. You may be seated. Here we have Paul dealing with the Galatians. He's in a city now where a church had been established to preach the gospel. But he was in a city, this church was established in a city that considered themselves to be very religious. And this city was known to be very fickle. And this city was known to grab on to a lot of different religion. Well, they were like little children. Well, you could put things in front of them, and no matter what it was, if it was dangerous, long as it seemed enticing to them, they would play with it. Amen. They had a bunch of religion. Uh, their religions, primary religion, were based on nature. Uh -huh. But here, a church had been established that preaches the gospel. And with them being placed with a new church here, they played with it for a little while. But after a while, they went right back to what they really believed in. And really the only thing that they ever knew because the gospel was new to these people. So what they did was they started preaching another gospel. And when we look at this another gospel, we, have to, we see that in verse 6. In verse 6, uh, where it says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. But then when you get down in verse 8, listen to what it says. It says, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So you got the gospel in this text? Because that's what he established there. That's what Paul sent the church there to preach was the gospel. But the people, with, not be, with them being young and with them being playful people and not serious, they subverted the gospel and started preaching another gospel be careful when you look at that word another gospel because God's saying it's another but it is the gospel but then when he gets down in eight he says cursed of those that preach any other gospel and I know you're looking at me funny far, far, uh, saying what you mean by another gospel well let's look at the time period we're looking at the time period. This is after the death of Christ. But you see, Paul addresses, in the first part of this chapter, he addresses himself as an apostle. Now, I ain't finna start that argument with anybody, but Paul was an apostle in the Old Testament, but he was a preacher in the New Testament. And these people here were just like Paul was. They were born at the time that Jesus was alive. And at the time Jesus was alive, he was calling apostles. Mm -hmm. Now, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he started calling preachers. Because if you re read the word of God, the church started after the death of Christ. And 
after the death of Christ is when he gave the qualifications of a preacher. Now, I know the, the Bible also says in the New Testament that he gave some apostles and some preachers. But what God was saying, in that time I gave apostles, but in this time I gave preachers. And that's why he put the direction and the identification of a preacher in the, in the New Testament and not the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, he let you know what an apostle was supposed to be. But in the New Testament is when he established what a preacher was supposed to be. And I told you I ain't going to pick that argument, but I'll give you that scripture and let you argue it on your own. But Paul addressed himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ. But he established the church because Paul was with Christ before he died. And after he died. And, and that's just a message for you and I. We love Jesus before he died. And then we love him more after he died. And then you'll get a chance to celebrate at his coming back again. But I didn't mean to go that far off into it, but I had to get some things into clarity. But here we see that Paul came and told him, I marvel that you so soon removed so soon removed and as you are removed you start preaching another gospel well let's look at this another gospel what they had done was they tried to take the gospel of faith uh, and and take it and they subverted it by incorporating the law and they start putting the law mixing the law with grace started mixing it with faith and, and, and then you can't be too tough on them because they had heard quite a bit about the law. Mm -hmm. They had heard more about the law than they did uh, grace. Uh -huh. So therefore, it wasn't a surprise to Jesus. But that's why he sent Paul back again, as, and, and he unctioned his heart to go back and tell him, I'm just marveled that you're so soon removed. Uh -huh. And do you, you know the people that are so soon removed from the gospel, uh -huh. don't you? Those are new converts. Those are babies. Yeah, yeah. That's why it wasn't a big surprise to Jesus. It marveled, it marveled Paul because I guess Paul felt like he was doing some preaching that the people were going to follow instantly. Yeah, yeah, but it yeah. takes a little time for us to understand the word of God. So we have to learn to have patience with grace. But I thank God that Paul returned and told him, I'm so I marvel that you're so soon removed. And now you've come up with another gospel. Yes. And this another gospel, again, it was mixed. It was a mixture. It was a watered-down version. Uh -huh. it, was a, it, was a, it was the grace mixed with the law. Yes. And, and I don't want to just keep telling you about what went on in Galatia. Can I tell you what's going on in America? Free, free, Can I free. tell you what's going on throughout all continents throughout the world? Yes. Just because God says that salvation is free to whoever believes, uh -huh. that seems like it's too easy. Uh -huh. That sounds like that's just it, it's a, some kind of trick to it. Yeah, yeah. So, so by chance, if you hear it, some say, well, there's got to be more to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we start trying to live right. That's why when we put the law in front of us, we said, now, I can understand him blessing me. Yeah. If I can fulfill the law, yes. but just to believe on it, uh -huh. he'll save me. Well. That sounds, it doesn't make good sense because we are a mean by nature people. Free. We are an evil nature people. Yes. We don't know anybody who will say, I'm going to give you eternal life uh -huh. for nothing. Uh -huh. All you got to do is believe in me. We got to have something we can see, mm -hmm. something we can feel. Uh -huh. So now if I, now I can understand if you say, if you stop killing i save you. If you stop cheating, I'll save you. Now, that makes more sense to the natural man. Doesn't make sense to say have faith. And then you say, well, what is faith? And they say faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now you're telling me to believe in something I ain't seen? You want me to believe in a salvation in heaven and I don't really know where it is? Because with my natural eye, when I look up, all I see is the sun, moon, and the stars. And sometimes it's dark when I look up. And you telling me up there is a heaven? And you telling me up there is a perfect place where everybody's going to love everybody? When you telling me ain't no sickness and all I'm around is sickness? No more death and I see people dying in the street? It's got to be more than some faith. So now they start saying, well, no, maybe they got it right because I told you they were lovers of nature. Uh -huh. They said, we got to have something else. Uh -huh. 
We marvel, and, and this is what the natural man does. We marvel at the stars in the sky. We hadn't figured out how they hang up there without falling. We marvel at how a fish can swim underwater and still breathe because a man can't do it. We marvel at how a bird can fly through the air. That we can see and understand. So I can serve that because I don't know what it is, but I know it's a miracle. We can serve miracles, signs, and wonders. And Jesus said, well, if that's what you want, I'll try that too. Because when he came down to 42 generations, when he walked this dusty roads of Jerusalem doing nothing but good, he gave you all the signs and wonders. He healed the sick, didn't he? He raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He confounded the minds of the ones in the temple at, just as a teenager did. That's what you, he gave it to you that you might see that. If that's what it's going to take for you to believe, then believe on that. But God is saying, really, salvation is by faith. Have faith in me. I know that I'm dead and going back to my father, but I'm coming back again. Have faith in it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the children here. They had so soon, they were so re soon removed, and they weren't necessarily removed from the gospel. Uh -huh. Because in the first, in chapter six, verse 6, it says, I marvel that you're so, so soon removed from him. Uh -huh. And let me tell you something, anytime you remove yourself from Jesus, you have lost the gospel too. Amen. He is the gospel. Amen. I'm so, I'm marveling that you're so soon removed from Jesus. And I just went through it and told you that he healed the sick, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind. He gave you what your physical eye wanted to see and what your heart wanted to feel. But as soon as the preacher left, or, us, or you left the preacher because the church was still there, you are removed from him saying that you are removed from the truth. So some of those people stayed in church. They were still going to church every Sunday. All right, all right. They were just removed from him. They took Jesus out. That's what took place because everybody that, that falls away from Jesus, they don't fall away from the church house because it's a place of comfort. That's why we have so many people that still sit here in the church and beg all the time but never give anything. Come on, come on. And I ain't talking about tithes and offerings. You begging for a healing. But you don't want to give no homage to God. You're begging for a new job. But you don't want to say hallelujah to the king of kings. I'm not telling you got to give me anything tangible. But you ought to give God something spiritual. You ought to give praises unto him who is able. And that means when he's able to do it, that means he hadn't done it yet. But he will do it in his due season. So you praise him in advance. You praise him by what? By faith. Because you know he's going to do it. And I'm, I'm just trying to get some active Christians in the church house. Because I know when you start praising him in here, it'll stay in you just like fire shut up in your bone. And ain't nothing out there can quench this fire. You, you won't run just in this church. You'll run out of this church. Because when you know how good God has been, you'll tell everybody. You ain't scared to tell just the people who love Jesus. I tell a star-nated sinner that Jesus died for you. He loves you. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's God that can change you. And I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. He said, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him. And you go on to the, and, and preaching another gospel, a perverted gospel. They te teaching a gospel that had been altered. They teaching a gospel that another gospel is another form of the gospel. And like I said, when we look at the Old Testament and New Testament, I, I'm trying to say it differently. When we look at before the death of Christ versus after the death of Christ, that's what we're looking at here. Before the death of Christ, we looked at repentance. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what John preached in the Baptist. And he would say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But after Christ died, we started preaching grace. We start preaching faith. Yeah. But don't get it confused in thinking that grace and faith took place 
after the death of Christ Jesus because the grace and faith was there before. It was in the Old Testament as well. And if you don't understand, won't you take a look at uh, uh, Abraham? Because it pleased God by the faith that Abraham had for him. And you do know that that was about 430 some years before the Mosaic law even came into play. He had faith before the law. And I'm just saying that to let you know that that was grace and faith from everlasting to everlasting. The Alpha and the Omega is from everlasting to everlasting, isn't it? Even in the Old Testament, even if you tried to live under the law, you, the only way you was going to ever fulfill it was by what? Faith. You couldn't do it on your own. No human effort was able to do it. And I know that it wasn't able to do it because there was only one who fulfilled the law. And his name is Jesus. He's the only one who could take care of the government because it was upon his shoulders. He was the only one who fulfilled it. And after he fulfilled it, he came back to his original self and said, by faith are you saved. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But I'm like uh, Paul here. I'm so soon, I'm marveled that you're so soon removed from him. And I keep saying that because don't ever be removed from Jesus. Stay close to him because it's in him that he will teach you how to overcome what you're going through. Because they were removed from stuff that was outside influences. They were removed because of nature. They were removed because of, of uh, uh, history. They were listening to their forefathers. They was listening to grandma and papa then that may not have known about this salvation that Paul had been teaching. And I'm not saying that they were bad people. They were just probably just going with what they know. But once you meet Jesus, you've got to put aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset you. And, and I'm not trying to put anybody down, but I am putting down every religion. Just because they taught it to you doesn't mean it was right. And the only way you'll ever find out the true gospel of God's word is in his word. And you'll never get it if you fall away from him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he's saying now that you remove yourself from him. And because you remove yourself from him and you're falling away from him, you're preaching another gospel. Uh -huh. And then it goes on to uh, verse 7. Let's read it. And it says, which is not another gospel. Another, listen, it says, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. I just told you, he, they were preaching the gospel. They was really just adding to it. And they was putting something in there that didn't need to. He said, but so they are perverting the gospel. And in order for them to pervert the gospel, they had to have first had the gospel. So now they are perverting the gospel. But don't you know just a little leaven spoils the whole loaf? Because let's look where it's going to lead them to. Because they had started perverting the gospel. Let's keep on moving. We get down in verse 8. He said, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel. It ain't another, no. It's any other. Because they perverted the true gospel. They got so far deep in left field mm -hmm. that now they're preaching something totally different from the gospel. Now they're preaching any other gospel. Right, right, right. He's not talking about a perversion of the gospel. Now you're preaching the salvation of your own merit. They Now they're caught up into self-righteousness. Now they're caught up into living perfect. See, now they've gotten rid of Jesus because, remember, they left him. And once you leave him, you leave his instructions. And once you leave his instructions, you definitely won't be teaching his gospel. Now you're teaching another gospel. And the gospel that we teach now, let's look at society again. Y'all get lost when we get over here to Galatia. Let's, let's come to America again. When we get over here to an America, now, now we got all forms of religion. We got all forms of religion. Now if you eat right, you'll live long. Now, if you exercise, you'll be healthy, and some even say you can live forever. That's another gospel, because it's appointed to all men to die. And the bodily exercise, it, it gives you little blessings, because the Bible lets us know that uh, bodily ex exercise profited little. 
So now you're preaching another gospel because you're preaching something God never said. You're not perverting his gospel. you just lying. That's what you're doing. Now you got people believing that they, that, that uh, I believe in a higher power. No, I believe in God. You know, higher power. He has all power, not no higher power. You, you make me think he ain't got no lower power. Because when you talk about your higher power, then you start talking about your lower power that you got to live in order to please your higher power. But the God that we serve of all power, we have no power to please him. But matter of fact, we're weak and lowly, and we are lambs of God. We can't take care of ourselves. What power do you have? But the God that we serve of all power, he gives it to you so you can preach right. He gives you wisdom so you can talk right. He gives you an understanding so you can live right. This is the God of all power. I told you, we're not talking about another gospel. We're talking about any other gospel now. And in this day and in this time, that's when they tell you, you ain't got to go to church. You ain't got to be around.